Chapter 65 Open the Door The hallway of the Blixen Arms emitted the same green, gloomy light no matter the time of day or night. Watch out for the cat, said Flora. The infamous Mr. Klaus, said William Spiver, and he looked around. He was smiling. The cat who was defeated by a superhero squirrel. I will certainly keep an eye out for him. And I hate to sound like a broken record, but may I just say again what a delight it is to see? Talk about being born anew. Nothing, nothing will ever again escape my notice. Goody, said Tootie. I'm not kidding, said Flora. Mr. Klaus could be anywhere. Yes, said William Spiver. My eyes are open. They are opened indeed. Knock again, said Tootie. Flora knocked again. Where could her father be in the middle of the night? Had someone kidnapped him too? Was it kidnapping if it was an adult? Or was that adult napping? George Buckman napping? And then she heard her father laugh. But the laugh wasn't coming from his apartment. It was coming from apartment 267. Dr. Meacham, said Flora. Who? said William Spiver. Dr. Meacham, knock on that door, quick, said Flora to William Spiver. She pointed, and William Spiver raised his hand to knock just as the door to Dr. Meacham's apartment swung wide. Flora Bell, said Dr. Meacham, my little flower, our beloved. She was smiling very big. Her teeth were glowing. Ulysses was sitting on her shoulder. Behind Ulysses and Dr. Meacham was Flora's father. He was wearing his pajamas. His hat was on his head. George Buckman, said her father, slowly raising his hat to them all. How do you do? Ulysses, said Flora. She said his name like a question, and he answered her. He flew to her. His small, warm, hopeful body hit her with a thud that almost knocked her off her feet. She wrapped her arms, her hands, herself around him. Ulysses, she said, I love you. So much happiness, said Dr. Meacham. This is how it was when I was a girl in Blundermeason, like this, always opening the door in the middle of the night and finding the face of someone you wanted to see. Well, not always. Sometimes it was the face of someone you did not want to see. But always, always in Blundermeason, you opened the door because you could not stop hoping that on the other side of it would be the face of someone you loved. Dr. Meacham looked at William Spiver and then at Tootie, and she smiled. And maybe, too, the face of someone you did not yet know, but might come to love. Tootie Tickham, said Tootie, it's a pleasure to meet you. This is my nephew, William. I would shake your hand, but as you can see, I'm in charge of this lamp. Actually, said William Spiver, I am her great nephew, and my name is William Spiver, and I realize that it is early in our acquaintance for me to be re revealing such astonishing and deeply personal information, but I must tell you that I was temporarily blind, and now I can see. Also, I feel compelled to say that your face is beautiful to me. In fact, every face is beautiful to me, he turned. Your face, Florabelle, is particularly beautiful. Even the... Even the sepulchral, sepulchral gloom of this hallway cannot dim your loveliness. Sepulchral gloom, said Flora. That's because she is a flower, said Flora's father. My lovely flower. Flora felt herself blushing. It is a lovely face, the face of Flora Bell Buckman, said Dr. Meacham. It is truly beautiful. But you have all stood long enough outside. You must come inside now. Come. Chapter 66 Will you please, please shut up, William Spiver? So, said Dr. Meacham, we have been speaking with Ulysses. We have been working to understand his story. From what we have put together so far, it involves a shovel and a sack and the woods and a poem. And a giant doughnut, said Flora's father. Ulysses, sitting on Flora's shoulder, nodded vigorously. A distinctly fishy smell emanated from his whiskers. Flora turned to him. Where's my mother, she said. Ulysses shook his head. Pop, said Flora, where's mom? 
I'm not certain, said her father. He adjusted his hat. He tried to put his hands in his pockets, and then he realized he was wearing pajamas and had no pockets, and he laughed. <laughs> Holy bagumba, he said softly. We need a typewriter, said Flora. Ulysses nodded. We need a typewriter so that we can get to the truth, said Flora. The truth, said William Spiver, is a slippery thing. I doubt that you will ever get to the truth. You may get to a version of the truth, but the truth? I doubt it very seriously. Will you please, please shut up, William Spiver, said Flora. Shh, said Dr. Meacham. Calm, calm. <laughs> you should maybe sit and eat a sardine. I don't want a sardine, said Flora. I want to know what happened. I want to know where my mother is. Just as she said these words, there was a bang, which was followed by a long, bone-chilling yowl, which was, in turn, followed by a very loud scream. "'What was that?' said William Spiver. "'That's Mr. Klaus,' said Flora. "'He's attacking someone.' There was another scream, and then came the words, "'George! George!' "'Uh-oh,' said Flora's father. "'It's Phyllis.' "'Mom!' said Flora. Ulysses tensed. He dug his claws into Flora's shoulder. Flora looked at him. He nodded. And then Flora's father was running out the door, and Flora was behind him, and William Spiver was behind her. Another of her mother's screams echoed down the hallway. George! George! she shouted. Please tell me that my baby is here! Flora turned and said to Tootie, Bring the lamp! She's worried about Mary Ann! There was another scream. It was time again for the squirrel to vanquish a villain. It was time for Ulysses to rescue his arch-nemesis. I'm on it! I'm bringing the lamp! George! Who will prevail? Who will be vanquished? Please, George, tell me that Flora is here! Me? thought Flora. She's here, said Flora's father. Flora's mother started to cry. Everyone needs to calm down, said Tootie. I've got it. She waded into the fray and whacked Mr. Klaus over the head with Mary Ann. The cat fell to the ground, and the little shepherdess, as if she were astonished by her own act of violence, crumbled. Her face, her beautiful, perfect pink face, broke. There was a tingle and a crash as the pieces of Mary Ann's head hit the floor. Oops, said Tootie, I broke her. Uh-oh, said Flora. But her mother wasn't looking at the lamp, or what was left of the lamp, she was looking at Flora. Flora, her mother said, Flora, I went home, and you weren't there, I was terrified. Here she is, said William Spiver. He gave Flora a gentle shove toward her mother. Here I am, said Flora. Her mother stepped over the pieces of the broken little shepherdess. She took Flora in her arms. My baby, said her mother. Me, said Flora. You, said her mother. Chapter 67 The Horsehair Sofa Flora's mother was sitting on the horsehair sofa. Flora's father was sitting next to her. He was holding her hand, or she was holding his. In any case, her mother and her father were holding on to each other. Dr. Meacham was putting alcohol on Flora's mother's bites and scratches. Ouch! Ouch! Oh, said Flora's mother. Come, said Dr. Meacham to Flora. She patted the horsehair sofa. Sit down, here, beside your mother. Flora sat down on the couch and immediately started to slide off it. Was there a trick to sitting on the horsehair sofa? Because she certainly hadn't mastered it. And then William Spiver sat down beside her so that she was wedged in between her mother and him. Flora stopped sliding. And I went up to your room, said Flora's mother. I climbed the stairs to your room and you weren't there. I was out looking for Ulysses, said Flora. I thought you had kidnapped him. It's true, confessed her mother. I did. Ulysses, sitting on Flora's shoulder, nodded. His whiskers brushed her cheek. I wanted to make things right somehow. I wanted to make things normal, said Flora's mother. Normalcy is an illusion, of course, said William Spiver. There is no normal. Hush up, William, said Tootie. 
And when I returned and you weren't there, said Flora's mother, and she started to cry again, I don't care about normal. I just wanted you back. I needed to find you. And here she is, Mrs. Buckman, said William Spiver in a very gentle voice. Here I am, thought Flora, and my mother loves me. Holy bagumba! And then she thought, oh no, I'm going to cry. And she did cry. Big fat tears rolled down her face and landed on the horsehair sofa and trembled there for a second before they rolled off. You see, said Dr. Meacham. She smiled at Flora. I told you, this is how it is with this sofa. Mrs. Buckwood, said William Spiver, what is that you are holding in your hand? What is that piece of paper? It's a poem, said Flora's mother. By Ulysses, it's for Flora. Look at this, said Tootie. They all turned and looked at Tootie. She was standing by the headless Marianne who was plugged in and shining. It still works. Isn't that something? <laughs> Why don't you read the poem, Phyllis? said Flora's father. Oh, goody, said Tootie. A poetry reading. It's a squirrel poem, said Flora's mother, but it's a good one. Ulysses puffed out his chest. Words for Flora, her mother said. That's the title. I like that title, said William Spiver. He took hold of Flora's hand and he squeezed it. Don't squeeze my hand, said Flora. But she held on tightly to William Spiver, and she listened as her mother read the poem that Ulysses had written. Chapter 68 The End or Something this poem was just the beginning, of course. There would be more. He needed to write about how they always, always answered the door in Blundermeason. He needed to write about the saving of Phyllis Buckman from Mr. Klaus. He needed to write about Mary Ann's broken, still-shining self. And Little Fishes. He needed to write a poem about Little Fishes. Also, he wanted to write about things that hadn't happened yet. For instance, he wanted to write a poem where William Spiver's mother called and asked for him to come home. And a poem where the other Dr. Meacham came and visited this Dr. Meacham and sat beside her and hummed to her and watched her sleep, and maybe there would be a poem about a horsehair sofa and one about a vacuum cleaner. He would write and write. He would make wonderful things happen. Some of it would be true. All of it would be true. Most of it would be true. Ulysses looked out the window and saw the sun glowing on the horizon. Soon it would be time to eat. A wonderful thought occurred to the squirrel. Maybe there would be donuts, <laughs> giant donuts for breakfast. Epilogue Squirrel Poetry Words for Flora Nothing would be easier without you because you are everything, all of it. Sprinkles, quarks, giant donuts, eggs sunny side up, you are the ever-expanding universe to me. <laughs>